Well, hello there. Um, as you can see, the title above this video is going to be talking about uh, more about your vibrational frequency um, and it affecting, uh, you know, <clears throat> incoming information uh, channeling. Also, uh, just talking about, um, you know, if you're in uh, a location where the vibrational frequency isn't as high, how that would then affect your channeling abilities too, and what you can do about it. Um, a student uh, came to me yesterday and asked me this question. So I'm going to dive in and I'm going to talk about it so that everybody can hear the answer. Um, the second thing I'm going to uh, be doing with everybody today is I'm going to be uh, asking uh, that all of our guardian angels step forward and we're going to be sensing our chakras and each of the chakras <clears throat> we're going to go through each of them so we can feel them and sense them opening and expanding and then um, once we've done that i'm going to be talking about replacing your chakras a lot of people aren't aware of what that is or what that entails or when to do it um, so we're going to be talking a little bit about that, and then we're going to be moving right into uh, practicing with our decks of angel cards. Okay. <clears throat> hello, hello. Oh, that's great. Everybody's popping on. So just <clears throat> before I get going, does anybody have any questions at all? Any question goes. <clears throat> and also... Um, I want to let everybody know who is having a difficult time. Um, if you haven't watched the short videos on how to navigate this uh, group from your laptop or from your phone, those short videos are located uh, down at the bottom of the group. If you scroll down or they're also located under videos. And also I've taken all the links that you could ever possibly need, uh, you know, the events, uh, the video material, the uh, photo material that you've missed so far in the group. And I put all those links right in the comments below the group rules, which are pinned at the top of the page. Also, if you need to know where the files area is located in the group, so you would like to see the ebooks that are available to you and also the uh, sensing energy worksheet, which we will be needing since we are going to be sensing energy uh, starting tomorrow. You can look at the worksheet and you can draw it out on a piece of paper or you can print it out. It is only one sheet. And I highly recommend doing this so that you can circle and say what you felt and who was coming in around your body so that you have that worksheet to look back upon and uh, and and know where spirit was and what it felt like and who it was. OK, so you're making a note. It's like journaling. But you're going to have one sheet is going to show a body and then you're going to you're going to place on that sheet where you felt the energy and who it was and what it felt like. So you remember, oh, yeah, that's what Jesus does when he comes in. I remember I see it on my worksheet. OK, so that is located under files. And all those links are placed in the comments. Uh, location where everybody had typed agreed at the very beginning of the course and it's right at the very top of the group wall pinned there under the group rules you can't miss it okay mm -hmm. absolutely great question Desiree um, there are no time or space constraints at all so if you're going to watch any of this video material at a later date get ready to have them step forward it, it won't matter if you're watching it live with me or at a later time it's fascinating how many times i've had people email me or message me and they tell me whoa i just like the energy that they felt um and what they felt it did for them and how it impacted them and how much it's helped them and they're watching videos that i have uh up on my youtube channel from like 
you know, two, three years ago. It's, it's really, it's pretty fascinating for me to see how many people message me that. Okay, so chakras are your energy centers. You have seven main chakra centers. And uh, <clears throat> there are others. Uh, but we're going to be uh, delving into the main seven today a little bit. And uh, then we're going to be talking about uh, replacing them. A lot of people talk about chakras and they want to cleanse them, get them rotating in the right direction again. Uh, you know, but we're going to be talking about what happens when possibly you've had so much stress in your life in certain periods that it really has impacted your chakras to the point where they may need be may need to be replaced um do what do i think about that as far as replacing chakras personally from what i've seen um and having chats with my team is that everyone needs to have their chakras replaced and you can ask anytime you wish but we're going to talk about what is the best time to ask if you just go asking right now <clears throat> it's best to have a lie down and then let them do it, okay? So you can ask right now and then schedule it for later on tonight when you're going to be laying down or when you're going to have a nap today or after this broadcast and you feel like lying down, that's a great time. But we're going to get into that in just a moment. <sighs> Absolutely. Draw the cards for the children and the teenagers too. How how do I how much do I wish I knew about angel cards when I was younger? Um, the first time I learned about angel cards, I was 28 years old, and I so wish that I'd known about them sooner. <clears throat> you know what? Sometimes people see like in color, sometimes they see in black and white. Sometimes the angels will show me in black and white. Sometimes they'll show me in color. Uh, sometimes I see colors that I've never seen before. Uh, types of green I've never seen before. So I would say that is just what works for you. And that might shift and alter over time. Then you might go into more color or you might get a little bit of both. I predominantly will, they'll show it to me in color and, or I see it in color, however, which way you want to say, because it's coming through my filter. So, but there are times where I'll see it in black and white and I find that really fascinating. But if that's the way you see it, then and that's, that's for you. However, that might shift and change over time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that there is definitely some upgrading going on. Um, a large amount of energy came in last night around two in the morning. Um, and I've checked in with uh, Ashley Cunningham and another friend of mine. And how I know when energy comes in is uh, I can feel it ramping up around me. Um, I start to feel like I'm getting heart palps, hard to breathe. Uh, my dreams are extremely vivid. And I'm just like in my dreams and I'm seeing a lot. And then I know that I've got incoming energy coming in. And so for me, I woke up at 5 a.m. And then uh, I was, you know, back up, I think, at 8 a.m. And it's it's just uh, ramping up a little bit for me. Now, this could be integration uh, individually rather than the collective all getting a wave of energy. So I'm not saying that everybody's experiencing this right now. But if you are, that'd be cool to hear about it. That started coming in uh, just last night. <clears throat> you know, and also, Anya, it depends on what's going on in our lives. Like if you are really busy or um, you're worried about something and your frequency is dropping. But I'm getting a pullback on both of those. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to go with upgrading or some kind of shift is taking place and then that's put on the back burner for a short time and then it'll come back. <clears throat> Sorry, I keep getting up. <clears throat> oh, isn't that great? <laughs> that's great. That's great. You know, um, you don't realize how impactful it is 
to teach someone about the angels and just even asking the angels for help. Uh, they're constantly trying to guide us, but when you deliberately ask them for help, it's amazing what unfolds. But then we need to pick up on the cues and the guidance when it comes in. Sometimes it's so loud, you're never, you're just not going to miss it. It is really important. You know, that they'll clamp down on your chest until you listen. I remember moving here, but I moved to another location and they wanted me to move to this city. And I wasn't listening at first. I couldn't sleep for two nights because they had me on lockdown in my chest. So all they have to do is slow the flow of energy in through your heart chakra. And then it's hard to breathe and your whole chest is super tight, including your stomach. And then I, and I knew they were doing it because they had done it to me before a couple of times. And I said, so what do you want me to do? And they said, well, at that point, I couldn't hear them. But what they did was they put my Nana's face in my head. And I said, uh, OK, so I'll call my Nana. And I did. And it just so happened my aunt had a room for rent in her home in two weeks time. So it was all it all unfolds exactly as it's meant to. And so when you're guided, follow and pay attention. <coughs> mm hmm. That's not very surprising there, Elizabeth. Now, did you ask to uh, have your upper chakras replaced? Because that might be part of it as well. But also being a part of this uh, course could also be affecting you in that way as well. Even if you came and you just didn't have time to participate in any aspect of this course and you uh, then you just waited to receive the course uh, <clears throat> in, um, um uh, workbook and, and videos that are going to be emailed to you after this course, you're still getting worked on. You, you've consented to that by uh, signing up for this. Okay. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I can speak for myself, Lee. I, too, did not enjoy the contraception, uh, the pill. Um, and I had some side effects from that as well. So you move to other forms of contraception that aren't going to affect your uh, hormones and or uh, bring a chemical into your body. I'm sure many of us have some suggestions for that. <coughs> Laura is saying that she could hear the energy coming in last night. Not surprising. It came in like a flood. Mm -hmm. Ruthie, I'd love for you to come on camera with me and we will channel your angels together if you'd like to do that. And we will practice together with our decks. And um, we can even both pull cards for you and then channel some guidance for you. Yeah, yeah, there you go, Anya. Yeah, because yeah. um, you'll have really intense, vivid dreams or it'll feel like a nightmare. But when you have all this energy coming in and your little vessel is like, what is happening? <laughs> okay, what does your body do? It goes into kind of a fight or flight mode. <sighs> and then your heart rate picks up and you got um, energy coming in through your chakras and, you, and you're maybe having some heart palps. So that's going to affect your dream state. It's not like we need to read into our dreams, I feel, at this time. It's just that this energy affects our vessel. Therefore, it's going to affect our dreams. Mm -hmm. um, Maggie, 110%. 110%. They're never too far away from us. We're always interconnected with them. Um, they ne they never leave our side. <clears throat> so they can go, they're omnipresent. So energy is omnipresent, means that they can go and do so many different other things, but also be with us at the same time. Or they'll come and visit us intermittently when we need them. So if you're thinking about her and she just pops into your mind, you're dreaming about her then she's definitely there that there's no not not even a doubt in my mind okay mm -hmm. so 
Um, one thing you can do, Maggie, is you can sit quietly with a quiet mind and ask your mom to come in close into your energy field and make her presence known. But your job, as you're going to be channeling and sensing her energy, is to quiet your mind. So if you're like, oh, I think I feel her. I don't know. Is this working in the head? Stop that and just sit in stillness and just feel where the energy is shifting and changing around your body. Okay, you're feeling pressure, warmth, maybe shivers up your back, maybe energy coming in from above you and it's on the top of your head. So you're sensing where your mom's energy is. And then you can ask her, mom, can you make it more expansive for me? And it's interesting because when they come in, there's times where they're laughing and and you'll feel the waves of laughter through your body <laughs> like this. It's really fascinating. So um, it's just about practice. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start in on answering the question that one of you, wink, wink, asked me yesterday. And I wanted to answer it on, on camera so that we all have this answer. When our vibrational frequency dips and we're having a hard time in life, maybe we have a bit of stress going on, does that affect my ability to channel spirit? The answer is yes. Yeah, because spirit is extremely high vibrational. And if I'm closing down and I'm centrally focused on what's going in my life, which is perfectly fine. We all go through this. In that moment, I just kind of wait. I go outside and I ground myself. I sit, sit in quiet out in nature. Take some deep breaths and then try to practice channeling. If your environment in your home or maybe your workplace or wherever you are is really heavy and low vibrational, uh, number one, you can call in Archangel Michael to be your spiritual bouncer. You call him in to come and live with you. You call him in to be in your workplace. And then he's like a filter. And he's vacuuming everyone. He's shielding from outside low vibrational frequency possibly happening in the globe. And he's ensuring that your vibrational frequency starts to go up. And he's also your bouncer so that anything that is heavy or low vibrational, just it's not going to be allowed in your space if it is attempting to be there. But again, I always say, if you see a pattern happening in your life of low vibrational things occurring, I would then question, what is it within you that is attracting that on a regular basis? So what is what changes can you make to shift that frequency that's happening in your life? Because once you are no longer a vibrational match for that, it is going to have to fall away or shift and change with you. So that's my first question. And if you're in an environment that's heavy and low vibrational, then I would suggest getting out of that environment and or making some changes. Um, the angels often say to me, they say, no one is a victim. There are no victims. And um I'm like, OK, then, <laughs> you know, so I never hear my guardian angel feel sorry for me or, oh, you poor thing. She never does that. Never, ever. So um, if your environment or your own frequency is dipping down, we all have those moments. No, none of us are going through this life experience without moments like that. My question to you is, why are these continuously being a vibrational match in your life? And what are you going to do about it? And the second thing is, 
um, wait until you're outdoors away with peace and quiet and in a good environment with your frequency lifted. Maybe you need to go lay down, have a nap, then go outside into nature and then practice channeling. Even myself. If I'm really having some stress in my life, I just know it's probably not best to channel in that moment because it's not as loud or as clear for me because my frequency is dropped. So I kind of wait till I'm in a better feeling place. I wait till I come into feeling better, maybe after a nap or a good night's sleep, and then I'll, I'll channel my team. Okay, so I notice that in my life. <sighs> okay, so uh, do do I have problems pulling in my own family members to come and communicate with me from the other side? I, I'm guessing that's what you're asking. No, I don't have any problems whatsoever. As soon as I ask, they come. <laughs> like as in within seconds. The only time that I'm, I've ever had an issue with pulling in somebody from the other side for somebody else is when they're in a rest chamber. So they've had a long life and they've crossed over and they are resting. And no matter what I do, I cannot reach them. Um, I, I'll have their guardian angel, you know, because I'm trying to look behind where they are. And the guardian angel's like, you can talk to me. So their guardian angel will take your message, but they are resting. And uh, that, that might be however long it takes. I've even had a reading where the individual is looking for her father-in-law and I said, he's in a rest chamber. And she says, oh, that's what the last medium told me six months ago. I'm like, well, he's still resting. <laughs> okay. So other than that, nope. The second I want to talk to my Nana, she'll come. And she'll lecture me that I'm not meditating enough. <laughs> Just like she lectured me in life. But that's how important it is. Because we perfected in our society to have a busy overactive mind that worries and reacts to everything going on in our lives oh we've perfected that haven't we and where has that gotten us how's that working out for us how's it working out for like uh getting out of my own way you know what this course really is about is about showing how to get out of your own way isn't that fascinating and here you thought it was about mediumship. But in truth, to create more stillness through your day-to-day -day life, that's why we're going to be talking about meditation on Friday. And I'm also going to be showing you how to do transcendental meditation. And it's very easy and simple to do. If you went to a center to learn how to do transcendental meditation, uh, like 20 years ago, they were charging uh twenty five hundred dollars so i'd imagine it's got to be what four to five thousand dollars and on friday i'm going to show you the absolute basics bare minimum to do transcendental meditation because a spirit has okayed it b my nana taught me she was a, a teacher of it and i even asked if it's okay to bring it forth to show others the basics of what she she taught me and she said absolutely in in her life she was like and we don't talk about this to anybody this is not meant to be discussed and i'm sure the center doesn't want it to be discussed because then they wouldn't make money right but i'm going to teach you this so that you can utilize this anytime you want and then you can create more stillness within. We don't need to be thinking at every given moment of every single day and overanalyzing and worrying about this, that, and the other, and what's going to happen, and am I going to have enough, and is, you know, worry, worry, worry. You know what that is? It's an old tape pattern, and the more you go into those thoughts, the more you create more of those thoughts. So the great thing you can do is be the still observer of when those thoughts come up hand it off to your angels repeatedly if it's 20 25 times a day and then take take your attention and you can focus on positive affirmations or just take your attention to doing the laundry or doing the dishes all you have to do is take your attention off those low vibrational thoughts and say 
I'm not doing it that way anymore. And then you start to have different thoughts. And those worrisome thoughts don't come back anymore because they are constantly being transmuted. It's a wonderful, wonderful way to do that. My, te my, my teacher, <laughs> my guardian angel, my teacher taught me. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're welcome. I think that there are there is a mass awakening happening on the planet right now uh, and everybody on the other side knows about it and they are beyond elated for it. Like to say they're excited would be an, a vast understatement. So much of an understatement. They're so excited for this time on this planet and they tell me this and they show me this all the time. So um everything that's unfolding on the planet right now is like a pressure cooker and what does it what happens when you have a pressure cooker happening you have two choices one you can focus on what is and react and respond to it creating more stress and more more worry and, and adding that energy into the global collective okay or the second path which the angels recommend is that you go within and that's really what this is about. It's about slowing down, going within, shifting your thoughts, shifting how you feel about yourself. And now we're in quarantine. So the influences of individuals that were in your life prior can't be in your life like they once were. Or maybe they are in your life and you can't get away from them. Therefore, it's amplifying and put, placing the focus on these individuals that you need to face and you need to change. It's fascinating what is unfolding. So you can dip in frequency and I'm not saying that I don't, but how long I stay there, that's up to me. How long I stay in low vibrational frequency is up to me. I choose that. Mm, fantastic, Tina. You're going to love this then. I'm going to teach you exactly the way my Nana taught me. You know what's fascinating, Sheena, is I'll see like um, white feathers falling, white angel wings. They like showing me that kind of stuff. So um, are you seeing snow in your mind or are you seeing white bits of feathers? So that'll be my first question. <clears throat> fascinating or there's snow for a reason so I'll let you answer that one okay so the second thing I would like to do now that we've spoken about stress in your life and how that can influence you physically energetically and how that can alter your ability to connect with high vibrational frequency to channel through their messages now we're going to work on um, each of our chakra centers, okay? <clears throat> so I want everybody to sit and I want you to call in your guardian angels and I'd like you to ask them to open and expand and um, affect your crown chakra, which is right here, okay? So they can flow energy into it or when you're asking to be vacuumed, they can pull the energy out. <sighs> You'll feel Michael just suctioning it off the top of your head. Today, we're just going to ask them to influence that chakra. And we're going to see which ones of us are feeling anything. You might feel nothing at all. But what I know is that there's going to be one or two or more chakras that you are going to feel. So we're going to go through and feel and sense our chakras. And then we're going to talk about replacing them. How cool is that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Good, good. So it, it might look like snow, but it's like little bits of white feathers. And they're just like washing you over with feathers. It's fascinating. Okay. So um, I'd like each of you to type in the comments if you are feeling your crown chakra. It might feel like tingling warmth a little bit of pressure or you might feel your crown chakra opening and expanding 
So if you'd like to type in the comments area, what are you feeling around your crown chakra? What's my job? To sit in quiet. Does it feel like energy is coming in through your crown chakra into your body? Or do you feel like a suctioning or a pulling off the top of your head? Tingling. Excellent. Cool. More tingling. How cool is that? That's really cool, Laura. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good. Pulsating and pressure, tingling, opening, tingling. Or you don't feel anything at all. That's fine, too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Tingling, pressure. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember that when you were a little kid? And the itsy bitsy spider washed down the the waterfall. So that's what you're feeling on the top of your head. Nothing. That's okay. You know it's okay to feel nothing, right? You don't have to feel something, and it might be just that. That's not. This is just. Is it the stage in where you are? I was there. I didn't feel nothing. I felt nothing, and that's okay to be there. Okay, energy coming down and in. We, <laughs> oh, you're getting really hot now. They're ramping it up <laughs> like a hot flash. Tingling, pressure, heat, like an incoming vortex. Yeah. Okay, so we are all aware of how much we're sensing through that chakra. And in the future, you'll try in maybe six months, maybe a year, and you can practice this again and you'll see, oh, oh, I do feel something now. Or, oh, it's way more open now. I feel way more energy coming in now. That chakra is more open than it used to be. Mm -hmm. Light sensation. Yeah. And goosebumps everywhere. Okay, so let's come down to the next chakra now. And that is our third eye. Okay, right here. It's fascinating to me because in the spiritual community, I've often seen a lot of, well, your third eye has to be open to see spirit. Guess what? <laughs> it doesn't have to be open to see spirit. Uh, spirit comes in many different chakras up here. And it will project images through energy into my head. It's not necessarily my third eye. My third eye is just one of them. So if you're if you feel nothing on your third eye, it's perfectly fine. Totally fine. The other um, two chakras on the other either side of the third eye is your ear chakras. OK, so let's sense if we feel anything coming here or here. Sometimes we get a band here, or sometimes a swirling, or sometimes a pressure, or tingling, or warmth, or nothing at all. Wow, your ears are about to explode. So is that like here or here, son? Cool. Very cool, Lisa. If you feel like a prickly type or a itchy feeling coming right into your ear, that is spirit talking into your ear. Fantastic. That doesn't happen to me all the time, but as soon as I get it, I know someone's talking right into my ear. And then I go really quiet in my mind and I let them form the thought forms. It's usually Jesus <laughs> for me <laughs> or my angels. Or sometimes if I'm talking to somebody, it's a loved one that's coming through. They'll either earmuff me where I'm like, uh, I just can't hear that well out of both my ears. I know somebody's wanting to talk to me or I'll get that in my ear. 
Excellent, Tina. Okay, not much with this one. That's fine. Pressure. Yeah, you know, you get a lot of pressure right here. And here, I get both. Yeah, didn't even know I had th uh, ear chakras. <laughs> I had no idea. My angel, my angels had to tell me one day. I said, why does it hurt so bad right here? And they're like, your ear chakras are opening up. I'm like, oh, okay, thanks. Mm hmm Okay, excellent. Mm hmm All the chakras are connected, right? So you got energy coming in here, then there's energy here. Then they, they love to make a little uh, light highway from here in between the two halves of your brain back to your pineal gland back here. And when they build this light highway, there's light here all the time in between the two halves of your brain. And I remember Archangel Michael coming to me. 15 years ago and starting to build this little light highway. I said, what are you doing? He says, I'm, I'm building a light highway so it's easier for spirit to communicate with you. I said, oh, super, fantastic. So that is something that you can ask for. Archangel Michael, please build the light within my vessel so that it's easier for me to channel spirit from here to here. Um, he knows what he's doing. But again, if you get any too much head pressure, headaches, you need to ask him to ease it off. He'll come in uh, periods. It's not like it's happening all the time. It's usually when you're laying down and resting, then you'll feel him starting to build. And you know what he tells me in those moments? He says, um, he says it in his words, which is not the way I'm going to say it now. He's basically telling me to stop thinking. It's easier for him to... Uh, build this light highway if my mind is nice and quiet. So there you go. You don't feel anything. That's okay. I didn't feel anything either. We we work with where we're at, and we work with where we're what what, what we have. Yeah, yeah. Back of the head, because if you think about it, the third eye goes right out the back of the head, back here. So that makes a lot of sense. And then it's part of pulling down your neck. Mm. Isn't that cool, Jewel? Mm -hmm. So some of you will feel nothing up here, but wait till we get right here. And your solar chakra. I would be surprised if you didn't feel anything. And right after this, we're going to talk about replacing your chakras, which is going to make them nice and fresh and super light filled and full of vibrancy and operating on full cylinders. And then I'd be really surprised if you felt nothing. But again, we work with where we're at. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, it really is amazing to see the uh, changes in people as they come back each course. I mean, look at Laura in the very beginning of this course. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's like watching a miracle unfold right before you all the time. Okay, so let's go to the heart chakra. The angels love to come through the heart chakra. How many times they've come through my heart chakra and then I'm saying, what are you doing from a heart chakra? And they say, we're opening and expanding your heart chakra. Because there was a point in my life a long time ago where I was heartbroken. And I was going through a very difficult stage in my life. And that was kind of going for years. And um, uh, a few years, uh, which was kind of surprising me because normally I, I didn't have that response or experience. Um, but I feel like I was uh, involved with a soulmate, so it was a little bit longer to recover from. And so they were coming in through the heart chakra constantly. If you're kind of closed off with your emotions, they're coming into your heart chakra to open it up. All right. Slight pressure, almost nothing, right through your heart chakra. Okay. Maybe you ask them to bring it in a little bit stronger. And see what happens now, Brianne. I want more energy through my heart chakra, please. Let's see what happens. Mm 
Oh, they're doing it. Two is like really throbbing. They can open and expand your heart chakra, and then they will pull more energy through. That can feel pretty achy. Heart massage, warm with heat. Yeah, warm heat, fluttering. Marianne, you're feeling something fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, that's great. Lisa, it can come through the front of your chest or it can come and it feels like it's coming through you the back of your chest. So they may come and open your heart chakra from your back side or from the front side. Strong pressure. Okay, beautiful calming. Okay. Okay, let's go to our solar chakra. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> All right. And nothing. Let's go to your solar. Solar chakra. Let's see how open this is. If you're finding that you're not feeling much, okay, um, we are going to speak with our angels today and ask about replacing our chakras during a time when we're laying down and still and quiet. If you have a lot of stress in your life, if your situation in life within you or around you is very stressful, um, you may be more closed down or closed off. I would suggest waiting until you have less stress in your life. Like when the dust settles, when you're not in a total pressure cooker of a stressful situation, when you you wait until the dust settles, then you ask to have your chakras replaced. However, let me just see what's coming in here. And I know something's coming in because it's coming in a lot of pressure on the back of my head. So I know that my guardian angel would like to say something on this. Um, they're talking about if you're having stress in your life right now, ask now so that they can get busy and replace your chakra centers and that they can flow their energy in through you in order to help you. Um, my guardian angel saying that some of us have like our, our chakras are just small and they're not uh, open or flowing enough energy through them. And so they would like each and every single one of us to ask to have our chakras replaced. Not only when the dust settles. Yes, but she can understand why I would suggest this, right? Because here you are, you're in a total stressful environment and you'll have your chakras replaced. But then the stress affects your chakras again straight away. So the reason why I say wait till the dust settles is so that your chakras being replaced stay nice and healthy longer because we want a healthy happy vessel and we want a healthy happy chakra centers so stress is not good not good to have in your life on a regular basis okay yep perfect i feel it from the front out my back as well my solar chakra has always been pretty open now my sacral and my root chakra they were barely open for years years of course i had digestive issues right and then i had a couple surgeries so that's not really surprising mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah is it like a surgery transplant replacing our chakras do you want to describe what that is i'll let i'll let my guardian angel explain it uh we simply pull out the she's saying incapacitated no longer working properly chakras and replace 
uh, these chakras. Uh, so, so if they're pulling it out the front, which is always where I feel it, they pull it out the front. She's talking about they bring in the new one in through your back. Okay. And now if they're pulling the, this one out, they just put a new one in. Same with your root chakra, except it's this way in between your legs. Okay. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I just feel like when I have stress in my life, then I know, hey, it's probably time to replace my chakras because the stress in your life will affect your chakras. It affects your vessel. It affects your energy. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So, OK, so sorry. Sorry, say that again. Uh, it's sounding like it's surgery or that it's very technical, but it's not. We can see your energy. We see your energy centers. And we can see which ones are opera operating uh, well and the ones that are not operating well. Okay. Yeah. So um, that was brought to my attention about two years ago. I was like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. Um, my root chakra, it kind of fell apart in like two different pieces when it got pulled out. And I knew it wasn't working very well. I never felt my sacral chakra. It barely had any energy going through it. And uh Oh, once that got replaced, I was like, wow, I had so much energy coming through my sacral chakra. You know where your uterus location is if you're a woman and same location if you're male there. Um, and it was just a flow of energy going through there. Uh, and I always will check in to ask how they are and if they they will only replace the ones that need replacing. OK. If they feel all of them need to be replaced, they'll replace all of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can replace chakras as often as you wish. What, what do you recommend as far as how often, though? From time to time, when you need. Um, if you want to ask them to replace the chakras that need replacing and leave it in their hands, then they will they will work on you for the rest of your life and replace the chakras that need to be replaced when they need to be replaced. <laughs> she says, don't worry, we won't do it too often. OK, this isn't something. Oh, oh it's Monday. Oh, Friday. Let's replace my chakras again. This is something that they do when it's necessary. <laughs> She's just smiling at me. <laughs> OK, so, yeah, I've even said that to my team. Um, you know, if you see a chakra that needs to be replaced, can you wait till I'm laying down and resting and then feel free to replace it? But this isn't something that's happening weekly or even monthly. Um, but. Again, we are all different and we have different situations happening in our lives. Some are more stressful and some are not. So let's go to the sacral chakra. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my sacral chakra was barely working for years. And you don't realize how much it wasn't working at all until you have it replaced. And you're like, oh, this is what it's supposed to feel like. <sighs> oh. <clears throat> yeah, so you have little tiny chakras in many different areas of your body. You can look that up online if you want to Google it. Um, you also have another chakra above your body, just above, okay, up above. Um, you have tiny little ones behind your ear. You have ear little chakras here, right? So you have them all over. You can look those up. Um, but we're talking about the seven main chakra centers. And if there's any other chakras that need to be replaced, feel free to replace them. You can just add that in if you want. Yeah. Oh, that's cool, Mary. That's awesome. So let's see how much energy you feel coming through it today. 
All right, so let's see what we feel with our sacral chakra, which is just below your belly button. And your solar chakra is around your belly button, I'd say on your belly button or maybe just above your belly button. And your sacral chakra is a good a couple inches below the belly button. For us women, it feels like it's right coming through the uterus uh, area. Mine feels like a lot of warmth and pressure. And it's um, coming from the front of me and straight out my back, my lower back. feels like a lot of warmth and pressure. My angel just said, this chakra needs their attention. So they need to put more energy in through this one. It needs some help there. Hey, Dorothea. Butterflies, that's great. Mm -hmm. Can it feel, <laughs> well, it is right near your bladder, so it wouldn't be a shocker at all. Mm -hmm. Okay. Heat, warmth, pressure, don't feel anything. Pressure, really strong pressure. Yeah. And you don't feel anything. Okay. So, you know, if you're not feeling anything, I think it'd be a great thing to do to ask your team to replace your chakras tonight when you're laying down in bed. And this also really helps your channeling abilities because now you've got nice, fresh, new chakra centers placed within your vessel that are fully functioning. Now, you replace your chakras, they're fully functioning and they feel really great. You have a lot more energy coming through your vessel but you still have a ton of stress in your life. You, I am one that does not allow a lot of stress in my life. I do my best to do whatever it takes to move into a better feeling place so that I feel better. I know that some of you can't just do that right now, but know this, if you are dipping in frequency on a regular basis, you're going to have to replace your chakras on more of a regular basis or allow your team to do that and just do that for you when it's needed. Because this stress and this, um, this frequency will affect your body and it's going to affect your chakra centers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. You can say, I'd like my chakra centers to be replaced whenever you see that they need to be replaced uh, for the remainder of this time, this journey on Earth. And if you could please replace them when I'm laying down and resting, either nap time, laying on the couch, or if I'm going to go to bed at night, uh, and I'd like this for the rest of my life. And then you know what I love to add on the end of any request I make? This or something better. Thank you, Agnes. 